Welcome back to the IB Investor Channel. In this video, we'll go through Starbucks and if it's a buy in 2023. Starbucks was founded in 1971 in USA. Currently holds a market cap of 121 billion US dollars. It trades under the ticker symbol SBUX and it currently offers a 2.16% dividend yield. So for the upside of the company, it has a strong brand recognition. So a lot of people knows about this company, even people or even, you know, countries where Starbucks has zero presence. I think some people are even aware of this company and brand regardless because they've seen it through videos on the Internet. They've seen it, you know, through Instagram and so on. So. It is, in a sense, a luxury coffee brand, and thereby, I think a lot of celebrities, you know, drink Starbucks, and you know, many of the, you know, famous people and influential people, and you know, people on Instagram and so on, often want to be associated with this brand, so they often have, you know, one of these cups in their hands when they're doing something. So, it has a pretty strong presence, I would say, and the benefit of all of this is that they can have pretty high prices on their products and people are still willing to pay a premium for this. Now for the share price of the company and the development of, it, of the share, so we can see that it's been a pretty bumpy ride here. So the company was hurt pretty badly here in the COVID-19 year here in 2020, but then the stock recovered. So we can see here in 2021, it bounced up here to the all time high at $126, but has since fallen. So in 2022, here roughly in July or June, the stock bottomed. And then we can see that the stock recovered again. And now it roughly trades at $106 here before trading or before the end of the closing here today. And it currently trades at a 16% off the all time high here. So not very far away, but we can see here recently, there has been some recovery here of the stock. Now in Sweden at my broker, there's about 3,100 shareholders so not the most owned stock, certainly not, but uh, yeah. But as we can see for the most periods here, the stock has done pretty well. So, you know, even for the five year period here, we can see that the stock here, at least in, in on my Swedish broker here, has done about 60% here. So pretty good overall, I would say. So now for some valuation metrics here. So we can see the enterprise value to EBIT here at the top at 24 times. So pretty expensive company right off the bat here. And we can see the enterprise value to cash flow or free cash flow at 38.5 times. Pretty expensive too. The earnings yield here at 3.38%. We have a free cash flow yield at 3% and a price to operate in cash flow here at uh, 20.31 times. So, you know, not the cheapest company when you just look at these metrics. Uh, so, you know, I think investors has to keep that in mind that uh, they're paying not just for the coffee a premium, but also for the company right now. Now for management's performance here, we can see that the return on equity currently is negative. So no real number here that we can, you know, value the company at right now, unfortunately. However, the return on invested capital here sits at a 18.10%, which is pretty okay. And then the return on capital employed here at 35%. So pretty good numbers here, at least at the end here from management, but unfortunately here, the return on equity is negative. So quite tough here to make an assessment on, on the, on management's performance here. Now for the margins of this company. So they have a, a beta margin here at 22.5%, a free cash flow margin here at 13.29%, which is actually pretty solid, I would say. The gross margin here is quite low at 29% and the operating margin here sits at 70%. So that's actually pretty good. So we can see that, you know, the difference here is not so huge. So that's actually a good sign here. And then the net margin here at a strong 13%. So we have to remember that this company is not a tech company. So we're not going to see, you know, 30, 40% net margins, but still a 13% net margin is pretty healthy for a company like this. 
uh, I think that the industry median sits at like, you know, single digit, perhaps 2%. I think I saw some number here in the past, so very low. However, if we do compare this company to, let's say, McDonald's, so McDonald's has a gross margin currently at like 58%, so much higher, almost twice that of Starbucks right now, and a net margin here for McDonald's at 34.6%. Uh, so, you know, when just comparing Starbucks to McDonald's, then McDonald's has much better margins. But these margin, at least the operating margin here and the net margin, that's actually pretty good numbers and nothing to be shy and embarrassed about because even for any other company, these margins are pretty good, I, I would say. It's just the gross margin, would, which is kind of low, but for an industry standard, you know, 29%, it's, it's not a bad figure by itself. But I just would have assumed that this company would have actually had a higher gross margin than 29%. Now for some negative stuff about this company. So starting off here with, you know, the commodity price volatility here. So, you know, they have to go in the spot market here to buy coffee beans. And we know that coffee beans is a, I wouldn't necessarily perhaps say that it's a rare commodity since everybody can drink coffee, but uh, you know, they're still affected by the prices here. And obviously they have some other ingredients here, not just the coffee beans in their coffee, but you know, milk and so on. So, they are affected obviously by the commodity prices and especially since I would assume that many of these coffee beans are sourced in other places than perhaps America, then of course they are affected by stuff that is happening internationally here. Uh, some negative as well here, we have some over expansion. So over time they have closed some stores, you know, just this year I read some report that they had closed roughly 61 stores so far this year and 15 of those happened in California alone. So it looks like this company is, you know, changing some strategy. Perhaps they had, you know, too many of these coffee stores at the same place and just shutting some down because if they can do that, perhaps they can drive more customers to one, uh, to one place instead of two places, which is close by. And perhaps they can, you know, save some money by, you know, not being overstaffed or something like this. Uh, Starbucks also competes with a lot of, you know, several other low-cost producing or providers, including Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, as we mentioned previously here, and, you know, convenience store brands, and not to mention, you know, the hot and cold beverage competition here from, you know, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and Dr. Pepper, and so on. So, you know, they have a lot of competition, uh, but then again, I think coffee has been on the rise and, uh, you know, it just seems like coffee doesn't really have any negative health benefits if you just drink the coffee alone. But, uh, you know, it's obviously much easier just to drink a cold drink during the summer compared that to a uh, hot coffee in the summer and not everybody wants to drink the, you know, iced coffees or whatever in the summer. So perhaps they have some seasonality in their numbers as well. You know, that some, you know, customers tends to not drink coffee in the, you know, warmer periods because it's already warm or hot outside. So, but at least these are some negatives that I, uh, or some downside of the company that I could um, come up with here. So just as a final remark here on the company, if, if it's a buy or not, I currently would stay away from this company right now because I think that the company is a little bit overvalued. So, you know, paying a 24 times multiple, you know, for the enterprise value to EBIT is pretty expensive in my book. I mean, I would say that, you know, paying something like, you know, 10 or 15 is obviously much cheaper. And also, you know, the EV to free cash flow multiple here, 38.5 times is pretty expensive. So, you know, the company itself has a lot of quality, I think. It's a premium brand. It's associated with a lot of, you know, good feelings, generally speaking. And, you know, it's, you know, the company itself, I think, is a quality brand. So the only negative right now that I would say is that, you know, it's just a little bit too overvalued right now. Uh, but, you know, it's a premium company, so perhaps it's worth paying up. But it's just that I've been a little bit, you know, afraid of, of paying up recently. So 
for me, it would be a pass right now this year. I would say if the company could down could go down maybe 30, 40 percent in value. I mean, perhaps then it would have been a bargain or bargain. Sorry, but at current valuations, it's just it's just too expensive for me to pay up. And please do remember that this is not, you know, a buy or sell recommendation in a sense. You have to do your own due diligence in terms of, you know, stock valuations. But these are my thoughts that I'm thinking about the company right now. All right. Thanks for watching this video. This was actually the first American video or first American stock company video that I've ever done, I think. So, uh, you know, if you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content here on the channel. Thank you for watching. Bye.